Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Learning Fundamentals by Ankit Shukla. I hope you're all doing well. Today we are diving into the world of DNS which stands for Domain Name System. It often is referred to as the Internet's phone book. But what exactly does that mean and how does it work? Let's find out. So DNS. DNS is a system that translates human friendly domain names like com into IP addresses which computers use for identifying each other on the network. It's like translating a contact name into a phone number. Some other examples of uh, DNS are google.com or msn.com. If you want to know the IP address of these sites, just use command prompt on your Windows machine and type google.com or msn.com and it will give you the IP address of this website. This process of querying name of a website or a computer in the world of computers or internet to fetch IP address is because of a process called as domain name system. Now, as you can see in this diagram, your computer queries for a website, let's say for example, domain.com. The query goes on the internet and one of the DNS serves on the internet, either your local DNS or your ISP or the root DNS, responds back with the information from the internet with the IP address, which in this case, as an example, is 216.3.128.12. When this IP is received by the requester machine, that is your computer in this case, it directs or prompts your browser to open the website address using the IP address of the website. Now, how does DNS work? We are going to deep dive into the moving parts of it. Uh, but before we move, move forward, uh, we just need to understand what are those moving parts. So in short, DNS query, DNS resolver, root servers, TLD servers, and authoritative DNS servers. This is a diagram over here that reflects an overall workflow on how a DNS works. The first part is a DNS query. In a DNS query, your computer sends a query to a DNS resolver. When you open a web page in a browser, it goes to your DNS resolver. This is called as a DNS query. Let's look at how the DNS resolver works next. The DNS resolver checks its cache for the IP address or forwards that query to a DNS root server. Let's understand DNS query and DNS resolver through a diagram. If you see in this picture, there is a DNS client over here. It opens google.com that reaches to its DNS resolver. Now DNS resolver can reply back with an entry of that google.com website within its cache, or it can forward that query to the root DNS server. Let's understand what is a root DNS server. Root servers are basically for directing the query to the appropriate top level domain or top level domain servers like .com, .org, .in, .us, .de, .au. Now, let's understand the root servers and how they function in a real world. So the client in this case, if you remember, this is the same diagram that we had two pages back wherein we talked about the DNS query and DNS resolvers. With the use of same diagram, we'll understand how root DNS servers work. Now the client in this case asks the DNS resolver that it's configured to go for help getting into a particular destination. So basically the first destination that starts from the client, it goes to the DNS resolver. DNS resolver can respond back with its own cache entries if it is able to find that entry in its own cache for that specific website that is queried by the client. In case it is not, it runs a recursive search that first goes to the root server to find out what is the TLD for that specific website. TLD stands for top level domain. So basically in short, the root server directs the query to the appropriate 
top level domain server over here from here it goes to the top level domain server uh, query in the search is specific to google.com that's a, just an example so root server responds with the top level domain for it that is the .com tld server if it was google.in then it will be .in tld server if, if it was google.ng that is google nigeria the tld server would be .ng tld server now what exactly is a tld server let's have a look a top level domain server is a domain name system server or you can say a dns server that keeps all the information for all the domain names that share a common domain extension. example dot com tld name server contains all the sites or the data related to the dot com domain names similarly for dot in so there will be a dot in tld server it will host or contain all the data related to the dot in domain names that's the definition of tld server let's understand some common tld servers across the world these are just examples so if you can see in the uh, in the diagram above it says uh, verizon you know it verizon holds dot com and dot net basically means that is it is the administrator or the tl dot tld domain owner of these two specific domain names across the globe and similarly we have dot de dot fl dot pa so in short you, know, you can understand that you know uh, you have different domain names which are managed by different organizations or countries across the globe let's look at the last moving part of the dns which is the authoritative dns server authoritative dns server provides the ip address for the domain back to the resolver which sends it back to your computer the authoritative dns server is the final holder of the ip address of the domain or the website you are looking for that it holds in its original zone records the authoritative dns servers can be where the website is hosted or where the dns provider is an example would be namecheap domain.com godaddy and other public dns domain registrars now let's talk about dns records DNS records are essential components of the domain name system that provide information about domain names and their associated resources. Each record type serves a specific purpose in the DNS infrastructure, helping to translate human readable domain names into IP addresses or they can provide other information about the domain as well. They are like entries in a phone book. Here's a breakdown of the most common dns record types and their function first one is name server record uh, the purpose of D name server record is that it indicates which dns servers are authoritative for this domain it can probably tell you the authoritative name servers uh, for a specific domain name then we have a record a record maps a domain name to an ipv4 address then we have double a double a so four times a record which denotes the domain name but the mapping for that domain is an ipv6 address next one is cname record or canonical name record it serves as an alias for another domain name which is useful for pointing multiple domain names to one specific ip address example would be um, in case of microsoft 365 we have outlook.com as the domain name uh, the c name for that is autodiscover.domain.com or for any other service which is associated with that domain name that would probably be used as service.domain.com right then we have mx record which is called as mail exchange record uh, the purpose of uh, mx record is that it specifies the mail server responsible for receiving the email messages for the domain so for any inbound emails coming to your organization the mx record notes the ip address where those emails should be coming to txt record 
it holds the uh, text information often used for the domain verification or email security. Uh, example of TXT records would be SPF, Sender Policy Framework, and uh, DKIM, uh, that is Domain Keys Identified Mail. Uh, we will talk about uh, these records when we start the understanding and uh, the sessions for Microsoft 365. Next, we are going to move on to the next topic, which is DNS caching. DNS caching is a crucial mechanism that helps improve the efficiency and speed of the domain name system. Uh, basically, it temporarily stores the DNS query results that you get from your DNS resolver. This reduces the need to repeatedly query DNS servers for same information again and again, and it decreases the response time for users and reduces the load on the DNS servers as well. Uh, DNS caching is also done on the resolver side as well. These are the only two moving blocks which have cache entries. As you can see in the example, uh, your computer searches for a specific domain name. It gets uh, the IP address information from the DNS server. Now that domain name versus the entry, the corresponding IP address entry, it is going to be stored in the uh, computer's cache or the operating system cache. It's, you can also refer that as DNS cache for the computer. Next time, once you open the same I domain name, it, will, it doesn't need to go to the DNS resolver or DNS server. It will automatically fetch the information from the cache records that it already has on, or you can say stored on its own memory or the windows. Next, we are going to talk about DNS lookup zones. Very important topic. Uh, Imagine a vast library. Let's say you have a library where every book represents a website on the internet. The domain name system is basically the librarian of that library, which helps us find the right book by translating human readable domain names into IP address. DNS lookup zones play a very critical role in this process. Uh, let's try and understand how they work. Uh, generally, there are two types of lookup zones in DNS, forward lookup and reverse lookup. Forward lookup. Forward lookups are like libraries catalog where you find a book's location by its title. In the DNS world, forward lookup zones translate human names or sorry, domain names into IP addresses. When you type a website address such as google.com into your browser or you know a forward lookup query is initiated. This query navigates through a series of DNS servers that we have talked about to find the IP address associated with that domain name. Once it finds the IP address of the domain name, the browser connects to the website using that IP address. Now there are different components in a forward lookup zone which helps resolve a DNS query. A records, we have already talked about these records, AA, AA, then C name, MX. Now let's talk about reverse lookup zone. We can picture reverse lookup as the index at the back of the book. So in case you have read a book, at the end you have an index which helps you find the topics based on a specific keyword, right? In the DNS world, the reverse lookup zone does the exact opposite of the forward lookup zone. They translate the IP addresses back to a domain name, confirming the identity of the server. For instance, for example, when an IP address like 192.0.2.1 is queried, a reverse lookup can reveal that it belongs to example.com or a specific website name.com. This is essential for verifying server identities and ensuring security. Components of a reverse lookup zone would be PDR records. Uh, these are like pointers in the index which links an IP address to domain names and enabling the reverse lookup zone. Why the lookup zones are important? Because when a query is made, it starts the local DNS resolver often provided by your internet service provider. If the resolver has cached the information, it quickly returns the result. 
otherwise the query travels up to hierarchy of root dns then top level dns servers and then the authoritative dns servers which hold the definitive records right the importance here is that dns lookup zones are efficient for internet navigation they reduce the latency improve reliability and enable secure communication by ensuring that domain name queries are resolved accurately and swiftly in summary forward and reverse cup zones are integral part of the dns ecosystem which translates the domain names to ip addresses and vice versa this ensures that our digital world remains interconnected and accessible all right why dns is needed dns is an essential part of the internet which makes possible for us to navigate with ease understanding how dns works helps us appreciate the seamless experience of browsing online all right folks this is the end of chapter 3 where we understood about dns dns moving parts like dns queries dns resolvers root dns servers tld servers and authoritative servers we also talked about different dns records like a record mx aa aa c name txt then we also understood about the dns caching dns lookups and the importance of dns in an it infrastructure if you found this exploration insightful don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more content on the it learning and network technologies we would love to hear your thoughts so please leave a comment or question below thank you for joining us on this dns journey until next time keep exploring keep learning and remember that every click and hit click lights a world of fascinating technology take care everyone and i will see you in the next video bye bye